So we learn about the son that had a dumb spirit of oppression dominating him. This gospel is set before us on this particular day to show us that we can have hope, that Jesus Christ is our hope. And the hope that we can have is that we can be delivered from life-dominating sins, from sins that oppress us, sins that tear us down. Each one of us, as we search our hearts, probably knows what their sin is. We have many sins, it's true, but usually there's one or two sins in particular which dominate our life. And it is when we wrestle with these things in Lent that we find sometimes how weak we really are. And we can get discouraged. We can think that it's always going to be this way. We can lose hope. We can believe the lie that we need to languish forever, defeated, weak, cast down, and that sin is always going to have its sway over us, almost seemingly at its will. But this gospel teaches us change is possible if we believe, if we fast and pray, and also if those around us would fast, pray, and believe for us. And so it was that Jesus, coming down off the Mount of Transfiguration, comes down and finds the Pharisees and scribes disputing with his disciples, trying to tear them away from the Lord's teaching while the Lord was gone with the three chosen ones that went on the mountain with him. Yes. And he comes into this midst, and one man is there who has come to present his son for healing to the disciples, but they couldn't heal him. He brought his son to the right place, but he brought his son to a place where the son, the father, and the disciples weren't ready to have the power of God to heal. And so the Lord, coming off this great triumph of Mount Tabor, the holy transfiguration, comes down to the realities of life in this world. The one before him that was presented by his father was in very bad shape because of sin, because of demonic oppression. The demons had him right where they wanted him, trapped by besetting sin. And it says that so dire was his shape that he was being torn and he foamed and he gnashed with his teeth and he pined away. Imagine the depth of despair and depravity to which this young man had sunk. The father had brought him to the disciples, seeing the way they had healed many. But the disciples tried to cast out this demon, and they could not. The demon dominated this life so completely. So sad was the pain, the terror, the destruction, this domination that Satan held over this young man. The father was truly in grief as he brought his son for healing, having tried everything worldly, everything in his strength and the strength of those around him. He came for supernatural healing. Jesus, seeing this, said, O oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you or have to endure you? Bring this young man to me. So it is, we live in a generation. We ourselves lack faith. The Lord speaks to us as he spoke to all those assembled there. He spoke this to the Son. He spoke it to his disciples. He spoke it to the dear Father. He spoke it truly to the Jews and the scribes and the Pharisees that were there. O oh, faithless generation! And so it was in this situation that the Lord had the young man brought to him. And when the demon came before the Lord, he tore the son again. It says the spirit of evil tore him, and he fell on the ground, and he wallowed foaming, utterly captivated by sin. Perhaps we feel like that ourselves right now, the fourth week of Lent. But we just can't get victory. We've tried to fast, we've tried to pray. We've tried to break the chains that tear us 
apart, and that make us foam, and that make us wallow in sin, and we haven't been successful. The Lord comes and he says to the Father, how long is it since this came upon him? And the Father issues the sad proclamation of a child. My brothers and sisters, how true it is that many times the sins which dominate our life came upon us in the unguarded times of childhood and youth. When in our folly we didn't take care of the spiritual warnings of those around us, to the warnings of the church, to the warnings of the scripture, to the warnings of the Holy Spirit, and sin came into our life. And it began to slowly take over our life till it got to the point where we were captive by it. How long, how long has it been for us that we were wallowed in sin? Coddling, perhaps, sometimes fighting, sometimes resisting, sometimes resisting to tears, but not being successful in putting away those chains that bound us as individuals ourselves. How long has it been? Perhaps it's been very long for us. Perhaps it's been a long time that our sin has been casting us into the fire of anger, the fire of desire, the fire of lust, the fire of all sinful inclination, or into the waters, into the whirlpools of the cares of this life, into the surging seas of sin and the things that this world captivates us with. Perhaps it's been very long. At times like this, we need to respond properly. The first thing we need to realize is that God wants to have compassion on us. And this man calls out and says, if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. That should be our attitude, that God is willing to help us, no matter how long it's been that we've wallowed, foaming, being torn by these particular sins that buffet our lives. Jesus says to us, he says, if we can believe, all things are possible. If we can just believe that Jesus really is God, and that he really is almighty, and that he really is Panto Prato, that he is almighty God himself, that he came down from heaven, he died on the cross, and he ascended back into heaven, and we await his coming with glory. If we can believe that, and we can believe his words, that he wants to have compassion on us, then all things are possible. Truly, it's possible for us to be delivered from these things that are tearing us apart. Straightway, the Father cried out to the Lord, and he said with tears, would it be that each one of us has at least someone who cries out with tears for us to God? Might it be someone that else that's praying for us, somebody else that's interceding for us in our weakness, he cried out and he said, Lord, I believe, I believe some. I don't know if I have enough faith. I believe. Help my unbelief. That should be our starting place to be delivered as we sit here at the fourth week of Lent and want victory by the time of Holy Pascha over our sins. We should say to God, have compassion. Help my unbelief. I believe some. Help me come stronger. At this time, the people came running, sensing something great was about to be happening. And Jesus rebuked the foul spirit, saying, I charge you, thou deaf and dumb spirit, thou spirit that ties the mouth to speak good of God, that spirit that's deaf and won't hear the words of God. I charge you, the Lord says, come out and enter no more in. As if to say, but it be for my help, you would have no hope, even though I deliver you today, because tomorrow you'd be swept aside again. The Lord comes with compassion. The Lord comes to us, even with little faith, and he's willing to cleanse us, and to heal us. The spirit cried, and it ran him sore for one last time, coming out of him, so that all would know how desperate this man's shape was as a young man. The spirit comes out and left him, it says, as one who was dead. 
Truly, when God delivers us, the world will look at us as dead. The world will see us as dead to their pleasures. No more do we seek the things they seek. No more do we do the things they do, hear the things they say, want to be where they are. We want to be where Jesus is. And so we too, when Jesus delivers us, appear to be dead to the world. And then these great words, Jesus took him by the hand. Jesus desires to strengthen you and to lift you up. And he reaches down, he takes you by the hand to strengthen you, and then he lifts you up. This is God's work. It is God's work to lift you out of the mire, to deliver you from those sins, those cords, that pain, that destruction, that downfall that's come upon you again and again and again, perhaps since childhood. He wants to take you by the hand. He wants to lift you up out of the mud. And then he says, you must also arise. It's not just God's work. It's yours too. God will work, and truly without him deliverance is impossible. But God then says it, we must arise also. We must be like the prodigal son who arise from our place of, de of doom and destruction and then set off anew towards the Father. We get God's strength and it is true. We are lifted up by him, but then we also must arise. And so it is that we hear the words of the Lord this fourth Sunday of great Lent, saying, this kind of oppression, this great problem that faces you, this great sin that has its cords around you, this can go forth by nothing but by prayer and by fasting. And so it is that the church sets before us, as does the Lord himself, these hallowed days, these revered days, as it says in the words of the pre-sanctified liturgy, which we do on Wednesday night, these revered days, this course of the fast, set before us to fast and to pray. That's our part in arising. Our own arising requires that we join to what God has done for us and to the strength that he gives us. This day of St. John is remembered because of the great work that John wrote about the ladder of divine ascent. This ladder that we climb towards the virtues, towards holiness, towards new life in Christ, and ultimately towards the divine kingdom, the heavenly kingdom, eternal life. With Christ. St. John's remembered for this great work, justly so. It's a work that lays out the necessity for every Christian, for every single soul that desires salvation, to struggle, to labor, to wage spiritual warfare with God's help and by the power and the prayers of those that love us, our own prayers and the prayers of the saints. We need to believe that God can and that he will deliver us if we set our hands to the task ourselves and are willing to rise up at his call. We must fight lawfully. We must fight according to the world and the work of God in our life. But we must fight. Do you have some sin that's entrenched in your life no. that you feel like has you captive? God says, don't lose hope. Perhaps the struggle has been going against you to this point. But God says, if you can just believe a little bit, I come, I come and strengthen you. I come and take your hand. I come and lift you up. And when we join to that work of the Holy Spirit in our life, and we arise too, we can believe that God will deliver us too. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.